had time to, to enjoy this whole process at all. <laughs> I, I'll enjoy it a little bit more now that the recruiting's done. Uh, it's been a crazy month. I mean, it's it's been where, you know, anytime we're not practicing, we're on the road somewhere recruiting and doing home visits and trying to see, you know, all of our committed kids before signing day. So, um, you know, last year it worked out to where signing day was a week earlier, and, you know, the coaching staff got a little bit of a break uh, when we sent the kids home. And just the way the schedule worked out this year, you know, we really haven't had a break, uh, you know, this entire time, so uh, I enjoy being out there on the practice field with the kids. You know, they they've been energetic. They're really energetic today. Um, I enjoy all that, but uh, you know, I am I am ready to uh, kind of breathe out a little bit. Has it hurt your preparations at all, or hindered? Or well, I, I just think it's it's uh, it's just put a little bit of a, a time stress on all of us. Um, that's, that's that's the only thing. I mean, I think that uh, you know when we've been here in the building, it's been really good. Uh, coaches worked hard. I mean, you feel good about our game plan. Uh, the players have uh, really practiced well. I, th I think really our time here in Greenville this year is probably, uh, I feel like we prepared better than we did last year. So, uh, <clears throat> you know, last year I thought when we got to the bowl site, we were very, very sharp. And so I'm hoping uh, to have a repeat of that this year. How Oh, it's tremendous. I mean, just, you know, we've talked all week just about certain kids that maybe, you know, were backups throughout the year or they're young that have just, you know, leaps and bounds, uh, you know, during the bowl, bowl prep, you know, because we really, that first week and a half or so, we focused a lot on those young kids. Uh, and so it's just been really enjoyable because you've gotten kind of a, you know, a preview of what you're going to have in the spring uh, before you get to the spring. So, you know, if you if you do this continually year in and year out, uh, obviously, you know, you're adding, you know, 14, 15 practices a year uh, to the development of your program. You've had your craziness. Coastal's had its craziness. Has it been more difficult to prepare for them with all that they're going through with changing head coach? Well, you know, uh, yes, the head coach has uh, changed there, but – the coaching staff that coached them throughout the year is the coaching staff that's coaching the ball game. Uh, and, you know, so we have a pretty good grasp on, you know, who we're playing against and what we're going to be seeing schematically. Um, you know, and I, th and I have a lot of respect for their coaching staff. You know, I've known that, that bunch for a long time, and they do a great job. So I really, you know, I expect to see the, the nine-win coastal team that uh, has been there all year. That's the one I expect to see next week. I don't know. I mean, they're 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 offensively they're a little bit different than what we've seen traditionally week in and week out. Uh, but you know, and like I've talked about before in my press conferences, I do think they've evolved a lot uh, since I saw uh, the staff last. And I think you know they have incorporated in more of the zone run game. Uh, they you know they still have a lot of the option stuff off of it. Um, but you know, certainly I think they have they, they have you know a lot more playmakers than maybe they have in the past. Um, you know, defensively, uh, you know, they, they look like a Chad Staggs uh, defensive unit. You know, they're very sound, very aggressive. They're going to, you know, they're going to be really aggressive against the run. They're good tacklers. They, you know, they play with a lot of energy. Uh, you know, so I think they're just, they're what I expect, you know, from this, uh, from this coaching staff. I think that there have been rule changes the last two years uh, by the NCAA that has had maybe unintended consequences, um, but it has created you know what we're dealing with right now, which is you know vastly different than what college football was five years ago. Recruiting is vastly different than what it was five years ago. Um, I don't think there are probably not many people that like the way the current state of college football is with that stuff. Um, so I do think there needs to be maybe a take a step back and, hey, what is best for the student athletes? What is best for the sport? Uh, and let's, let's move that way instead of how can I keep from getting sued? How can I avoid a lawsuit? I mean, I think any time you're, you're making rule changes because you're scared, uh, I, just, I just don't think that's worked out very good. And uh, so I think there probably needs to be some kind of, you know, 
governance, you know, somebody that is, I don't know, over uh, FBS football, because FBS football is just so much different than any other, you know, uh, division. Uh, I just think there needs to be some consistency. There needs to be rules. I think that, uh, you know, right now I feel like there's not many rules. And uh, I just think there, there really needs to be some thought put into this. And, I mean, it's not just me speaking out. I mean, you, you see, you know, Mac Brown this week, who I respect greatly, uh, Coach Narduzzi up at Pittsburgh, Coach Dorn at NC State, you know, counterparts uh, that are all throughout the Eastern Seaboard have been, been, been very vocal this week about, you know, just things that they don't like about the direction that things are going. Well, we monitor it every day. I mean, there is, you know, I would see guys going in every day, and so we're monitoring it constantly. And, you know, the way we view it is, you know, we signed a large number of high school kids today. Uh, I just, I, I still believe in that. And that's, you know, I, I hope high school coaches hear me. We still believe in recruiting high schools. And so we're, that, that is going to be the foundation of our program. But, uh, I do think that the transfer portal has added uh, a different bucket. You know, you have high school players, you have junior college players. Well, it's just a different bucket that we can draw from to fill out our roster. Um, you know, as we've talked about a good bit, we, we do try to be very, very cautious because we want to protect uh, the culture uh, of our locker room. And I want to make sure we're bringing in the right kinds of young men that will, you know, be enjoyable for us to coach. They'll be enjoyable for our players to be teammates with, and they will represent East Carolina University in the, in the first class manner that we expect. And so we are very cautious uh, with kind of who we bring in, but, um, you know, it, it is another bucket to, uh, you know, fill out your roster with. I'm very pleased with the class we signed, and it's uh, you know we we've been working on this class obviously for you know over a year now, and uh, you know we've we've kind of said okay here's the line, and so and, and if and if if they're above the line, then you know we recruited them heavily, offered. Uh, we had a lot of guys uh, on campus throughout the you know last winter, last spring, over the summer, all fall. Uh, and you know, felt you know really good about our class uh, of committed players, uh, and you know, so I really like the group that has signed with us. Uh, we're not quite finished yet. You know, expect a couple of more uh, today. Uh, we'll also, you know, either later today or tomorrow, announce a small group of transfers that have already signed, you know, their paperwork with us as well. And, uh, you know, and that'll continue. So this is, you know, I told the players in here earlier today that, you know, we, we signed, you know, 14 guys that will be added to our roster. I expect that to, you know, be a little bit higher by the end of the day. Uh, and, you know, some of those guys will be here in January. And so, yes, we're finishing up the 2022 season, but we're also, you know, well into building the roster for 2023. <clears throat> Very, uh, you know, starting, you know, with, I'll start with the tallest first, Malik, uh, you know, just a uh, dynamic uh, player. Uh, he's a kid that has a ton of ability, um, just really, you know, a, a good kid. Uh, just really have enjoyed getting to know him and his grandparents. And, you know, they've been here for multiple games. You know, I went, I went down and saw them. Uh, maybe a week and a half ago uh, at their home. Uh, Grandma cooked me a, a, a fantastic meal. Uh, had some uh, some good pecan pie along with that. So, But, uh, you know, I think he's got a very bright future. Uh, I think he could – I think anybody that watches his film, you know, you can see he's got a chance to be a, a special player in this league. Uh, when you look at Zion and Nate, um, you know, a little bit more slot receiver type uh, bodies, uh, a little bit different. You know, Nate, uh, you know, has, you know, electric speed. Uh, a big play, uh, big play guy uh, will be will be an impact in the return game as well. Um, excited about him. Uh, you know, Zion, I love that kid. I'm just telling you, you know, when he came last summer to camp and, you know, he had tweaked his hamstring at another camp a few days earlier. And out there on that field, and we had a large group of kids there that day, I mean, he, they had to make him get out. I mean, he would take every rep he could get 
on offense, then he'd flip over and he'd play corner on defense. And to be honest, he dominated that camp that day. And that was the day you know, I said, that kid's got, you know, he's got that dog in him. And he, you know, he's got that, you know, he's, he's, he may not be the biggest guy in the world. He's got great hands, he has very good speed, and he has that mentality to compete and play. And I do think he has a chance because of his mentality to possibly play early. Um, you know, DeMorris, love his length, love his athleticism. Uh, he, he, I'm going to make it to a basketball game eventually. I, you know, I used my one visit before signing day to go see him and his mom. Uh, so now that we're beyond signing day, I want to go see him play basketball. He claims he's a really good basketball player. Uh, I think he is, uh, but just a really uh, special athlete with great length. Uh, you know, I think he's going to be able to do a lot of things. It's going to be interesting to see how much he grows and fills out as to whether he's going to be playing, you know, the field end or the or the rush. Um, I think Kieran, uh, a little bit different body type, uh, has a tremendous motor, uh, extremely physical, uh, tough guy. Uh, you know, he's going to be one of those, you know, Chad Stevens type guys that just is a, a relentless competitor. And so very, very pleased with those two guys. Well, I still think we need to um, we need to kind of finish up uh, offensive line. Uh, you know, probably be looking for a couple of guys there. Uh, you may see us take uh, you know one or two skilled players on offense. Uh, still, um, you know, defensively, I feel like possibly by you know the end of the week we may be about set there. Uh, you know, I really like the core of guys, and I think we have a good mix of young and old. Uh, I really like the young linebackers we signed today. Uh, you know, Julian and DJ, I think, have a chance to be really good players in this league. Uh, but, you know, it is going to be it, it's going to be a few years, you know, probably before they're ready to be the guy. I don't know. Same thing I tell all freshmen. Listen, hey, you'll play when you're ready. You know, it's, uh, you know, if you come in and, and you're the best player, you know, out of the gate year one, then have at it. You know, the best players will play. Uh, but, you know, you don't want to put too much pressure on a young player and play them before they're ready. So, but really like those two guys right there. And Raheem, at quarterback, I mean, go, I know it'll be early, but going to Flynn, Mason, and him, so he could get some work early. You know, we've debated on, you know, bringing another quarterback in for the spring. Um, but I really, the more I've looked at it, you know, I, I didn't really see the right guy for that room. Obviously, we feel, you know, very, very good about Mason Garcia. Uh, and he's, he's the, the next quarterback here at East Carolina University. And so I want to make sure that we do a great job continuing to develop him. He has been awesome during these bowl preps, you know, with his, his performance and just everything. Um, and Raheem, you know, I recruited him to, you know, tell him, you're the next one up. Uh, and so uh, the advantage of only having three there in the room with Alex uh, added in is that, you know, Raheem is going to get coached and developed this spring. And I think that's the plus of staying at three. I do think we need four going into the season. So we'll be on the lookout for uh, another guy to add to that room in time. But uh, really like the three that we're going to have in the spring. I love that kid. That's the first thing I'll tell you. I mean, he's there's something about, something about him. Uh, another one that claims he's a really good basketball player. Uh, I, he may have been more of my kind of basketball player. I think I fouled out more games than I uh, did anything else. But uh, he, he uh, had seeing him, I remember when I first met him, uh, probably his sophomore year, he came to our O-line, D-line camp and just meeting him out there on the field. Uh, and just, you know, I wondered that day, you know, because Nate over at Conley had told me, you know, he's going to be a really good, uh, a good lineman in time. And you just wondered how is he going to develop physically. But just seeing how his body has changed, especially in the last year, uh, you know, I, I think even since he committed to us, he's continued to grow. Uh, he has good height. Uh, he is very athletic. Uh, he is a big kid. I mean, he's a 300-pounder right now, and he's still a senior in high school. Um, you know, I think that uh, he's going to be a guy that'll probably be a multiple-year starter for us, uh, and I think he's got a very high ceiling. So, um, you know, as excited as I am about him physically, though, just his character and his family, uh, I've enjoyed getting to know them, and uh, just 
you know, I, I just think he's it's it's an awesome uh, deal having him sign here. Coach, I feel like with just the nature of sports, it's always <clears throat> just another group kind of pushing you ready to play. And I think maybe this day this kind of maybe reminds you more of that, like the players. So I guess what, what's their reaction? You see an extra bump in competitiveness maybe, or just when you tell them, hey, there's an extra 15, 20 guys going to be joining you soon? Well, it's, you know, playing time's always a thing you have to manage. And it's, uh, and it's always something that everybody wants to play. There's 120 guys in this in this uh, locker room, and there's only 11 that are on the field at a time, and that that it, it is what it is, and uh, you know it's it's a thing where we try to run it the way I think it should be run, and in, in that you earn your playing time on that field, uh, and I think that that has uh, has has you know treated us well over the years. Um, you know, you every day you're out there competing. Um, you know, I tell the players they decide who starts. They decide who plays, you know, by their performance on the practice field. And then, you know, once they get their opportunities in the game, their performance in the game. Uh, but certainly, anytime you, you know, bring in a group of new players, obviously, you know, they're all competing for the same spots. And so I do think that competitive edge uh, is something that uh, is good for our program. You know, that's, that's you know, that, that's the big thing I want uh, in our quarterback room is, is we've got to make sure that we have guys in there to push Mason because he's got to continue to develop. But, uh, you know, that's – and that's the great thing with Raheem coming in. You know, he's going to have Alex and Mason in there to push him because uh, I do think Raheem's got a, a, a great upside. But, uh, you know, it's uh, – in, in we talked a while ago about the way things, you know, changing in our sport. Um, there are certain things that I just – we're going to we're going to do things that way, and it's we're going to try to be very clear and honest with our players at all times, uh, and we're going to try to do things right. Uh, we'll try to make sure that they have the things here to support them and help them develop and grow. Uh, and we all have the same goals. You know, I want to see them develop into the very best player on the field that they can possibly be based on that God-given talent. I want to see them graduate from East Carolina University with a degree. I don't care what it's in. Okay, and. And I told one the other day, I said, nobody's asked me my GPA since I graduated college, so just make sure you get the degree. Uh, and I want to do well. I'm not saying that, but, I mean, uh, just get the degree. And then I want to see them develop into the best young man that they can be and, and be a productive citizen. And so, you know, we're going to stay true to the values and, and core things that we believe in, uh, you know, no matter what. Anything else for Coach? All right. Appreciate you guys.